recording here. Um, just by way of housekeeping, uh, these sessions are recorded and um, will be available for replay on the website, on our website. Okay. Right. Solid Edge user interface. Um, I think there's been some misunderstandings with uh, what the user interface is about, and uh, just let me clarify that. The user interface uh, is not directly involved in creating geometry and everything, it's how you interact uh, with the system and how you set it up and control it. So today we're going to be looking at the, uh, the background to these controls, we're not going to be talking about um, creating geometry as such. Okay, let's get, uh, let's get started. Just to give you an idea um, of what we'll be covering today, there seems to be a lot of topics, but uh, most of them are fairly short. Uh, we'll have an overview of the Solid Edge screen, and uh, then a quick look at some of the miscellaneous uh, ways of doing things, especially around the mouse. Then we'll be looking at some detail at the quick access toolbars, keyboard shortcuts, how to uh, and uh, and how to uh, customize those, and again with the command ribbon bar, how to customize that. The radial menu, uh, which has been around for a little while now, um, how to set, how to uh, use that and customize it, because I think it's very powerful when we customize it. Um, we've done. A, we'll be looking at the little horizontal command bar, application colors, transparent pathfinders, uh, the options in the radial menu, how you can turn those on and off, and uh, just the live rules options. Um, there's been some changes over the last couple of years with how those are displayed and work. Um, haven't much changed much since ST3 to ST4. And we'll be looking at windows and how those windows dock and uh, interact with the screen. Uh, as an interesting um, aside, I, uh, on your registration form, I asked you to uh, let me know what version of Solid Edge you were using. I came up with uh, interesting statistics. 43% uh, of you are using ST3, which is what I'd expect. ST4 has only been out uh, just over a month, uh, but 29% of you are using ST4. Now, I still note, and we notice that we've got 23% of people using ST2. I'd strongly recommend that you uh, look at uh, upgrading to uh, to ST4 in the near future. And I've got 5% uh, of the people who uh, didn't respond to that question. Actually, it's a, it's a very good response, and I'm quite happy with that. And it's, uh, It gives us a better idea of where everybody is at. OK, uh, let's take a look at the Solid Edge screen layout. And you're all familiar with this, but what's it called, and what's it do, and what's it about? And I'll just start from the, the top, um, top left-hand corner. There's no particular order in this, but just to, uh, just to work around it, we've got the quick access toolbar sitting up there. That doesn't have to be there, by the way, and we'll show you how we can move that around. Uh, below that is the command ribbon bar, the main ribbon bar. Uh, the, uh, this interface is, of course, very similar to the um, Microsoft Office 2007 uh, and beyond user interface, and it's very consistent with that. Uh, next, we've got the edge bar tabs, which are by default minimized uh, down the side here. And alongside that, we've got the pathfinder. Um, which by default in uh, Vista or Windows 7 is set up to be transparent. Down the bottom we've got the prompt bar, which you'll all be familiar with. Um, going across we've got the command finder. Uh, we tend to forget about that, and the command finder has been enhanced uh, quite a bit with uh, ST4 and works in, as far as I'm aware, all environments. Next to that we've got the view controls, which are replicated back up on the command ribbon bar. Um, Going up to the top of the screen, over on the right, uh, the help menu. Let's not forget about that help menu. It's uh, there. It is <laughs> little icon hidden away there, and uh, quite easy to miss. Uh, moving across uh, to the centre, uh, I've just highlighted a group within the command bar. You'll notice we've got a relate group there, a dimension group, and solids group. These are called groups, and the purpose of the slides really just give you names on things. And we've got the horizontal command bar or the command bar in here. Um, as, I, uh, as we'll see, that can be horizontal or vertical. I prefer the horizontal, and that's the default. What we've got here is the default setup of the screen. OK, we've got some miscellaneous user interface things. It's right, probably really important to get out of the way up front, because um, some of these things you'll be aware of, some you won't be, and there's sort of no other heading for them, I'm afraid, except for miscellaneous. And um, 
OK, we've got Alt key for keyboard commands, right click and hold for radial menu, right click, click and drag for, for uh, gesture, double click scroll, scroll wheel for fit, uh, scroll wheel uh, and select feature for rotate and scroll, scroll wheel zoom. What does all this mean? Let me find out. Well, let, let us find out. Uh, we want a better one than that. We want one with a picture in it. There we go. Your screens update. They're a little slow here. So um, the Alt key for commands. If I tap the Alt key on my keyboard, you'll notice that there's a letter combination comes up next to everything. So sketching is SK, surfacing is S SU. So if I type SU on my keyboard, I go into the surfacing menu. And if I wanted to do a blue surf, I'd type BL, and it brings up the blue surf menu. So this is available from anywhere. You can do that by, um, uh, as I say, just tapping the Alt key. I'll just bring that up again so you've got the top level menu. I want to go to the View menus, and I want to look at, um, uh, we'll turn on uh, VS, see what that does for us. And it makes it wireframe. We get that menu back. Okay, um, right click and hold for radial menu. This radial menu is very useful. If I just right click and hold, you'll see the radial menu come up, and then I can pick which command I want. There's 16 on here, they're customizable. We'll look at that in a moment. And you can see me highlighting those commands. So if I highlight that command, I'm in the line draw command. If I click and drag to the right, it will go into the line draw command automatically. That's a gesture. So anything that's on the inner ring, I'm now in the zoom area command. So the gestures, and we'll see how to control those, are on the inner ring. So if you uh, click and drag downwards, you'll get the appropriate gesture. And I got the draft gesture there the draft command out of that gesture. So just be aware that the uh, that gestures are there and we'll see how they're commanded, uh, controlled in a moment. Um, I'll do the zoom first, but as you know, and this has been the case with Solid Edge for a long time, the zoom on the mouse wheel, on the uh, middle button of the mouse, uh, zooms to where you're pointing at on the screen. So the, if the cursor's out in the top, over on the uh, right hand side here, then we zoom towards the cursor. If I put it in the middle there, it'll zoom to the cursor. If I put it on there, it'll zoom to that object. As That's standard behavior. With ST4, we've got a new behavior. If we double click on the middle button, it will do the same as a fit command. So just to do that again, double click, and it fits. Now, for those of you who don't have a, uh, a 3D controller, like I have here, and I'm just rotating things around a little bit with it, you've got some new mouse controls. If I click the middle button out in the, out in the open area here, and then pick a feature, you'll notice this little red dot goes on it. Now, when I rotate by clicking and holding the middle mouse button, it rotates around that red dot where I placed it. If I go out into the off the graphics, click again on that button and click on a feature like an arc then when I go to rota rotate it will rotate around that arc so if I click out here again select another feature that one there rotates around the axis of that uh, that arc or circle if I just click in the outside area there it turns those off so it's all done with the middle button and of course the scroll wheel zoom that we talked about so it's pretty straightforward stuff, but it's um, it's uh, it's good to know about those things. Okay, you can customize a lot of stuff in this user interface, and uh, I think this is worth worth knowing about. Um, the first one we're going to look at is the quick access toolbar. This has been there since, oh, I think ST1 at least. Um, might have been even earlier. So um, it's where we got to before. So everything's customized. Uh, every, you can, it's not everything is customized, you can customize anything. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is the quick access toolbar. So we've got, um, it's up the top here, uh, this little icon here gives its own menu. We can turn on things like the, the new icon, open, etc. to have in here. So we've got new document, open and print set up on this one. Um, <clears throat> and we can add a lot of other customization 
by let me get this menu up um, by clicking on the um, on any anything right clicking it on anything up in the command bar itself in the um, the command ribbon sorry itself so I've clicked here and I've said customize the ribbon and it will click on that sub menu and it gives me a customization menu as I see that what will come up is a, is a screen uh, the customize screen and from here I can customize keyboard the quick access menu uh, the ribbon bar itself the main ribbon bar and finally the radial menu so this is how we get to all of those so let's just take a look uh, at this within solid edge itself it's not the one I wanted it's the one I wanted okay so if we come up here right click and say customize the ribbon and here I get all my keyboard quick access and so on in my quick access bar we see we've got undo redo if I close this one and use the uh, my apologies that's the default position for my quick access bar there what I've done is I moved that just by clicking on this icon and I've moved it below the ribbon bar some people prefer to have the quick access down there and they can fill it up with a lot of commands I can as you said as I said before I can turn on the new it's going to create a new theme to customize it I need to create that new theme we'll talk about themes in a moment and now I've got the new I've got the uh, open and I can put a print command up there as well so a shortcut to those so these ones you commonly use again going into my uh, full customization menu if I look at my quick access I can add anything I like in there I might want to from the view I might want to put the, um, the set the clipping planes um, so I can add those oh, sorry open that up and just hit the add and put it in there uh, I can add the on command put that in there but what I want in there is a separator so it's got a little separator in there I want to move the separator up so it's there say uh, save that in theme one I can name a theme so I just type in there to put a theme I've got the solid edge default which I can't overwrite so in your themes I've got one called mark and I've got a new theme I can type in anything I want there and save them we'll see where these are saved shortly when I close out of that what we'll see is I've that's how I've customized my bar I put my set planes in there going back let's have a look at some other things that we ca can customize um, if we're looking at keyboard shortcuts there's some interesting things in here so if I go to my tools I might want to set up access through my keyboard to the variables so I want to have a um, use the shift key shift uh, plus another key and I might put the V key in there so as I do that what I've got now is a shift V will work in the um, part synchronous environment so if I do a shift V that's what I get in there providing I'm using this theme we'll so how to set up themes in a moment we you've probably seen that um, if I've got something that's already there um, say I'm setting up peer variables and I want to do that and I say okay what I want to use there is the control key and in here I want to use the um, C for instance it'll come back and say that combination is uh, currently assigned to copy do you want to reassign the control C to be what you want it to be um, if you say okay it'll do that uh, I don't want to do that so I'll take that out uh, it's pretty straightforward if we look at our quick access which we saw before if we look at our ribbon bar uh, what I might want to do here is um, one of the ones that I don't use too much is the surfacing one so I'm going to turn that off or I could say just remove it so I've taken out surfacing uh, I want to add a new tab in there uh, which I'll call I want to rename that to be mark for instance uh, in there in the group in there I want to call it um, my tools and in my tools I might want to add um, some of the surfacing commands so all I want to have is uh, something out of the curve set I want key point curves 
uh, add that and uh, I'll add that set I want the intersection curve uh, and so on might want the intersection point add that um, and when I set that up as you'll see I'm going to put that in my theme one we'll close that save the uh, changes and if I click up here and say themes go to new theme one or my theme one uh, we've got a tab up here called mark which has got those things in it so you can see how I can rapidly change that we'll see where they're stored in a moment but I can also get back to the solid edge default at any time you cannot delete the solid edge default so it's always going to be there so uh, yep we're back up and uh, running on that okay um, that was the uh, the ribbon bar itself the radial menu again anywhere there customize the ribbon and this is probably one that you will want to modify um, let's just take a look uh, I've gone to the radial menu here um, I'm going to put this into new theme one and I want uh, I don't want to use the zoom area in there at all so what I'm going to do is I want some sketching commands in there sketch command that I use quite a lot um, is, 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 is draw the draw commands is my rectangle by center and all I have to do here is to drag that across into there uh, he says sorry that's what I want rectangle by center and that's the set there I just want to put that in there and I might want to have the um, rectangle by two points immediately above that because I use that a lot so I'm changing this quite dramatically I, I'd leave my select in there and use my dimensioning tools um, I may not use live section that often so I want to put a, um, a polygon by center on that one and so on I can build up that uh, that set to be um, to be whatever I want it to be it's going to go into um, new theme one so as I say close this yes and now when I bring that up that's I've got my my command in there so as you can see it's um, it's pretty flexible and of course don't forget at any time I can go back to my uh, default my get out of jail free card now once you've got all that set up you probably don't need to have these uh, this command bar open all the time now somebody's going to say how did you do that where did, where did they go all I did was double click on a tab I selected a tab and double clicked it's a toggle turns them on turns them off or I can right click and say minimize the ribbon bar right click again and say and undo the minimize bar pretty simple okay where are these where do these files go um, they go to C in in this case mark C users mark app data roaming unigraphic solution solid edge, edge version 104 and we will see a number of files in there let's just take a look at that that's probably the easiest way isn't it he says uh, here we go I've gone to computer local disk users mark app data uh, roaming so it follows me around Unigraphic solutions where all the stuff is kept solid edge obviously 104 customization now there's my uh, new theme one and so I've got a new theme one uh, custom uh, keyboard custom so my keyboard customizations in there my uh, quick access toolbar my radial toolbar now these are XML files um, don't try and modify them directly use the command interface to to modify them now the beauty of this is that you can simply copy and paste these to anywhere you want right so if I set one up uh, let's say I'm the lead draftsman and I set up a, um, a some customization themes that I want everybody to use I can set them up on my workstation and then just copy them onto the others machines under the the, the same uh, the same area so it's in their uh, their, their users area users uh, whatever their login name is app data roaming 
and down we go into there. So fairly nice. The other thing to remember, um, close that down, is that um, if you're moving from ST3 and you've done any customization in ST3, your customization XML file will be brought forward automatically into ST4. So um, that's very nice. Okay, we've got a number of options with our customization. They're under the Solid Edge Options area under Helpers. Now, what do these things do? Uh, first of all, we've got the application color scheme. You know, it's it's one of those things that's um, good to know. Uh, for some reason, I have no, I haven't. Um, we can change that so it's uh, options, helpers, um, color scheme. Uh, I want blue. Say apply, and we've got a blue color scheme as you can see. I don't particularly like that, but uh, some people might. So I'll put that back to aqua, which is or silver. Silver, I think, is the default, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, The next one that we've got is the Show Pathfinder in Document View. Now, <clears throat> what that does is sets up the transparent uh, Pathfinder. This is on by default, but if you're using XP, it will not work. It only works with Vista and Windows 7. Now, you can change the background type in there, as we can see. Um, I want that one. We can change the background type to uh, a gradient background, text with a white background. Um, the text with a white background is just that. The gradient background is probably easier to see for most people. You can have a play with that anyway. Uh, the next one is um, the command user interface, the horizontal toolbar, so that when we access a command, we get a horizontal toolbar. Or you can revert to the uh, sort of behavior that we had earlier. So if I use the vertical toolbar, apply that and bring up some command, uh, he says, it, oh, it's off screen probably. Yep, that will change the toolbar. I've got that on another screen and I can't move it back to the small screen at the moment. So I will let you uh, play with that because it, uh, it does what it says it does. So you've got horizontal toolbar or a vertical toolbar. The next one is radial menus, and these are gestures. Now, I have had people be very confused about gestures, gestures and turn them off. Now, um, I would look at working with gestures because it can speed up. If you start using the, maybe if you just start using the, um, the radial menu, menu using the click and hold method and then selecting the uh, the icon you want uh, after a while you'll get to um, to work out where it is now that delay that you get after you click on the button uh, is 400 milliseconds so you can change that you can also change the minimum drag dis distance for a gesture it's pixels on the screen so it's relative to your screen size so if you've got a very high resolution screen you may want to go for a bigger number of pixels if you've got a lower resolution screen, you may want to go for a smaller number of pixels. It's just a compromise there. Just be aware that that's, that's the case. Now, live rules. Uh, let me just illustrate with um, the solid edge itself. We'll bring up one with a part. So if I start modifying something, my live rules come up here. And you'll notice that they're transparent. Right? They sit in the background. Live rules in ST2 of course and earlier were vertical over here and you had to take your eye off the screen and move over to see what was going on much easier with uh, this arrangement I believe but that is as we can see is controlled from the screen okay windows and docking um, this can cause users when they first start using uh, the, it's called the Fluent user interface from uh, from uh, Microsoft, the uh, the Office 2007 user interface. Um, on our menus on the side there, we've got a pin, so we can pin pin the window. So we click on that, it pins the window in place. So we've just clicked the feature library there, and we're going to pin it in place. Now we're going to pick one of the tabs in here, and I've picked the um, Family of Parts tab, and I'm actually dragging the window away. So I'm dragging, just click on that tab 
with the uh, left mouse button click and drag it away and it sets that menu up separately it's come out of this bar and is over here that's the result so let's take a look at that very quickly um, is that hard to do probably not let's just get rid of some of the garbage off the screen here okay so if I click on this menu out it comes if I go off and work somewhere else uh, it will eventually collapse but if I pin it up like that so it's locked in place you'll notice it moves the edge bar across now I've got some tabs in here the uh, that's my um, live my um, family of parts I've got layers I've got sensors and simulation if I come back to that one and say well I'm using family of parts a lot I want to pull that toolbar out so it's separate on my screen I can just drag it out like that and you'll notice that I get these little stickers I'll talk about those in a moment I put it out there now I unpin my toolbar and it goes away you'll notice now that this is no longer available in here now what commonly happens and people get confused is they say I don't want this out here anymore so they just close it it's still gone right I don't have it there um, you'll notice it's not in the set of tabs so um, I've got a problem straight away what I can do to get it back in the tabs is click on this icon here and return it now what I've got there is this now where it was before before I closed it so if I now bring out my um, my parts here pin those up and I want to pull this back so that it goes back into this onto the tabs so what when we start to move this you'll notice that these blue stickers around the place sitting at the corner of the screen there so if we look right over to the left over to the right of the screen we see a blue sticker there if I put my cursor on that blue sticker it shows me where it's going to put the window put it there if I pull it off here and put it up there it's going to put it up there same down the bottom and so on if I uh, let's just put it in here so we don't take up so much screen real estate if I put that one it's going to stack it up next to the edge that edge if I drag it over there you'll notice I get a set of stickers in here so I can go top left bottom so on but if I click on the middle one if I don't click on it I just point at the middle one and then release what it does is it puts that into the tabs again you'll notice that's sitting in the tabs but the tab is in the wrong place I want to put that tab I just click and drag it just a normal um, uh, left click and drag it into the right place and I can unpin that and it's back to normal so it's pretty simple to deal with that thing you just got to be aware that it's um, that it's there and how it all works so what we saw there is when we want to put this back we can use this center sticker you just point at it and release uh, to place a window inside another window as a tab of that window this is all Microsoft stuff it's really got very little to do with uh, with solid edge okay um, we're running a little bit over time my apologies for that let me just uh, mute here for half a second while I cough sorry about that my throat was becoming very dry and scratchy and I needed to cough so we've had a look at um, some of the miscellaneous things that are in the user interface you know there's some of those little things that are, um, are quite powerful and uh, uh, the the mouse controls you want to have a have a bit of a play with those and you'll find them very useful um, the quick access toolbar that's very useful I, I, I it's something I use a lot and set up uh, for all my different environments remember that the customization for these things is unique to each environment so if we're in synchronous part it's different from um, from ordered part if we're in sheet metal it's again different from part and so on assembly is going to be different so you, you set them up for each of the uh, the uh, areas that you want to uh, use these customizations in and we've got keyboard shortcuts which we saw you know, we can put our own uh, keyboard combinations in there stay away from modifying the standard ones especially like control C and control V that will cause you a fair amount of grief if you change those um, but you can't change them uh, your command ribbon bar you can cut customize that to put your own groups up there your own commands in the order that you want them but you can always get back to the default you can't ever overwrite the default uh, your radial menu 
and I would look at using that I would look at customizing it for the way you use you can put most of your commands up there never have the uh, ribbon bar open uh, gives you a lot a lot of uh, screen real estate back your application colors that's nice but you know, no big deal uh, your transparent pathfinder the only thing there to remember is you've got to have uh, Vista or Windows 7 I think most people should be on Windows 7 these days radial menu options and that's about how you um, how you set up uh, the delay for it to come up and the uh, the amount of travel that your mouse does to, to pull the gestures up uh, your live rules options uh, about how it's displayed and your windows and docking uh, don't forget about that that's uh, that's something that can confuse people I know okay look thank you all for your attention um, question and answer se session uh, I know I see there's some questions coming in there how do you make the Pathfinder go back to that to that sidebar instead of floating all the time the, the Pathfinder is different the Pathfinder is floating um, by default uh, to send it back what you need to do is to um, the Pathfinder here you need to go to your options uh, it's under helpers isn't it and uh, pathfinder show pathfinder in the document view you turn that off and it goes back into the edge bar uh, I don't really recommend that to be honest but you can do it okay that was from uh, Glenn is the location yeah will it be similar the, the question here from Joe is the location of custom themes in XP the same as Windows 7 um, no it's not uh, it's where Microsoft hides stuff but it will be in a similar location um, I don't have an XP machine anymore here to that I can do that on <coughs> excuse me um, but it will be in um, you know my documents and settings uh, your login name and then uh, the, the same string below that so it's in a very similar location Joe uh, you need to Joe you need to move off XP <laughs> but yeah it's um, it is there just while we're talking about XP too, please remember that um, ST4 is definitely the last version of Solid Edge that will load on XP um, the next version uh, which is not that far away <laughs> it's uh, June next year ST5 will not load on XP um, one here from Scott what screen resolution do you recommend for solid edge look I run um, whatever it is um, 1920 by 1200 or more is fine more is better Scott um, there's not a uh, there's not a recommended um, we will we can work right down to 10224 by 768 um, what you'll see when that happens is the uh, the groups here concatenate so we'll have solids solids just as a pull down set of uh, a group uh, so if you'll you'll see this sort of thing um, let me just make that a bit smaller for you so as you make it smaller on the screen then you these concatenate a bit so you can use any resolution you like but you know um, for CAD um, I wouldn't go much below uh, 1920 by 1080 which is pretty common these days all your gaming machines are that but uh, 1920 by 1200 which is what I run on my workstation is better uh, can we locate the custom theme files on a shared server location yes you can if you look it up under files you can put them there um, sorry Joe <laughs> wasn't aimed at you personally mate just a um, um, yeah it's um, it is hard for people I know who have got IT departments that are still um, you know, living in uh, XP world I think the IT departments finally got a, an operating system with XP that uh, really worked for them and they're uh, loath to let it go unfortunately it hasn't been supported by Microsoft for a long time so we're um, uh, there's very little we can do with it I know um, the developers are telling us that there's some stuff that uh, we may not be able to fix uh, with ST4 might be some issues come up that we may not be able to fix with uh, with XP and and of course it's not it's a pre pre known issue this uh, transparency and things like that we know about and there's no way we can fix that because it just doesn't work in uh, in XP it's just simply not there 
Um, look, I thank you all for your questions, guys. It's been uh, been very good. Uh, my apologies for the sound earlier on. Uh, I unmuted in one place, but not in the other place, and that was um, uh, something for me to check. I've got a checklist here anyway on my board. I'll, I'll make a, a bigger checklist to make sure. Um, Although somebody might remind me um, next time. Problem is, once I get started, I don't look at the question field until I've got sort of underway for a few minutes, and uh, it did take me a couple of minutes to uh, to pick up on that. My apologies for that. Your um, uh, your patience is um, <laughs> is is appreciated there. Um, now what have we got here? Um, I think there's another question has come in. Uh, while using quick picks in draft, I hover my mouse over an endpoint, and the endpoint as a symbol becomes visible. I'm clicking the mouse, and I want to start a new line from there. Occasionally, the new line will miss the endpoint. Um, not really, sh uh, Rajveer. I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, it might be uh, helpful if you can. Um, Talk to the support guys, 1300 883 653. Um, the occasionally bit worries me. Uh, so, it, what you're saying there is that you, you occasionally can't pick it. Um, that sounds a bit odd. Um, it's something I'd bring up with support and see if they can, uh, and they should be able to nail that down for you. It may be. Um, it may be a graphics driver problem. I know if we've got uh, with you know certain older graphics drivers, some of the screen interaction stuff doesn't work that well. And you can imagine this is very highly dependent when we're de dealing with uh, graphic screen interactions on the uh, quality of the graphics driver and everything else. So uh, it may uh, it may help if you have a talk to them about about that sort of thing. I don't have a uh, an answer. It's not something that's known. Um, as, as a problem, uh, but it's it, it's probably a, a the problem would be unique to certain hardware or combinations thereof. Okay, guys, um, we're 45 minutes into the hour. I don't want to take up too much of your day. Um, just go back to my slides here. Thank you all for your attention. Um, next time, I uh, we'll, you you'll get an email ahead of time about what we're going to be talking about. Uh, look, if you've got suggestions for anything that you want me to include, um, please by all means send an email to me. You've got my email address on the on the invite, but it's um, Mark at edge uh, at edge Australia, at edgeplm.com.au. Um, anytime. So, just remains for me to say thank you and wrap it up. Thank you all. Uh, hope you uh, all enjoyed it, and uh, <laughs> my apologies for the. Um, for the lack of sound for the first few minutes. Bye for now.